Dr. Lou Anella, horticulture professor, has developed a water conservation and irrigation demonstration here at the Botanic Garden. Well, Lou, tell me a little bit about this project and how you got started. Well, we now teach an irrigation class, mm -hmm. and so this is an irrigation training center for our students primarily, although we love to show it to homeowners and industry people have come here to have, hold workshops, but it's primarily for our students. Mm -hmm. And water conservation is becoming so important. It's so important to have trained professionals work on irrigation for residential systems and commercial systems, and so we think it's a really great career opportunity for our students. So we wanted to teach the class. We wanted to have a place to demonstrate mm -hmm. different products and show different water saving techniques. It's really nice for them to have a site out here where they could come get some hands-on experience and see different irrigation components and the differences between them. Right, and this is for the students. And so, you know, we don't worry about coming out here and digging a hole and worry, uh, destroying your beautiful garden. <laughs> right. This is for the students to Absolutely. come and to do work. And so they can have lots of hands-on experience. Now when we're talking about water conservation with our irrigation, there's several different techniques and one of those is in the head itself that we're well, using. Well, pressure mm -hmm. regulation, regulating mm -hmm. the pressure of the water. Most spray systems actually have too high a pressure. Mm -hmm. And so if you have spray heads in your garden, in your landscape, that look like this, that are showing lots of misting where the water is just you know, going up into the air. Yeah. You can imagine that it's going to evaporate or just blow away. That's a waste of water. Mm -hmm. But yeah. almost every system you see is like it's that. It's very common. So there's Absolutely. not much pressure regulation in many of the residential systems. This is really what it should look like. Oh, so yeah. you might look at these heads and think that they're not even working properly, but mm -hmm. they are. It's that misting that we don't want. This is really what proper spray irrigation should look like. So each one of these heads has a pressure regulator in it, and it keeps the pressure to about 30 or 40 PSI, and you know, almost eliminates that misting. And so that's really another water conservation technique. Excellent, and you have one more type of head in this demonstration that's a little bit different system, but still reduces that evaporation as well. Right, these are MP rotators, and they are kind of a hybrid between a rotor and a spray. Mm -hmm. And so they put out these little fingers of water that rotate, and again, it looks like, gosh, is that really working? Is that yeah. really how it's supposed mm -hmm. to be? But that's exactly how it's supposed it's to be. It's much different from what we're used to seeing. And right. why the change? Why are we seeing, you know, why do most lawns have these high mists? Because people didn't worry so much in the past mm -hmm. about irrigation and wasting water. Now that there are going to be so many more regulations on water and water is becoming more and more of a precious resource, everybody is worrying about it. And some people are being forced to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Many communities are putting in regulations that say you must conserve water. You must utilize some of these water conservation technologies. And one of those concerns is keeping water off of hardscape. And I noticed when we look at the heads, you can control where that water's coming out. Correct, mm -hmm. very much so. And these are called match precipitation rate heads. So if you reduce the amount of area that the head is covering, let's say you change it from an 180 degree head to a 90 degree head, it reduces the amount of water that it's putting out. Mm -hmm. So it's match precipitation rate throughout the whole zone. Water is very evenly spread and that is a water conservation technique too. Very good. Now coupling with this, you can also use a controller that senses the environment, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. there are ET, evapotranspiration based controllers, mm -hmm. and they sense the environment and then tell the irrigation system how much water to put out. Mm -hmm. And so we have some simplified methods of that. Uh, we also have moisture sensors in the ground. So rather than look, worry about what the environment's doing, yeah. let's just worry about how much water's in the soil. Yeah. And if there's enough water, it turns the system off. If there's not enough water in the soil, it lets the system run. So I think that's a really great way to look at it. Worry about what's in the soil. What's in the soil, absolutely. And here in the irrigation training, you have, of course, the turf irrigation, but you also have a few other 
demonstration showing what, drip irrigation for ornamentals? Yeah, we have some drip irrigation down there. We have it in a flower garden. We also have drip irrigation in turf. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think you can't irrigate turf with drip, right. but we've, you know, showing that you can. And we also have some micro irrigation heads. They are spray heads, but they're intended for really small areas and they can be used uh, much the same way you would use drip irrigation. Okay, wonderful. Well, another part of your demonstration here is water conservation. Let's go take a look at a couple of those components as well. Okay. Well, Lou, I know we have a number of rainwater collection systems here at the gardens, and this is one I find rather interesting. This yeah. is called the aqua block system. Mm -hmm. There are a series of 16 of these blocks buried in the ground here. Mm -hmm. And so the water comes off the roof, goes down into the system. There's a pond liner around it and it holds 500 gallons. And the blocks themselves are just providing structure. Correct, mm -hmm. and space. Space, yeah. Yep. And then mm -hmm. down in here there's a pump mm -hmm. that uh, shuttles the water over to the water fountain over there. Mm -hmm. And we have a beautiful feature, water feature, using rainwater. So okay. we don't have to waste a lot of water. We collect the rainwater and then use it for the water features. And it's important to note that that's non-potable water. We can't drink it. It's uh, untreated rainwater. Yes, mm -hmm. but it is being circulated all the time, so mm -hmm. I don't know that it's going to be all that bad. No, but it makes a very attractive feature mm -hmm. as well. And if the water mm -hmm. in here fills up, if we get more than 500 gallons, mm -hmm. it overflows over here into our green parking lot. Okay. And so this is created with two feet of Cornell structural soil mix, mm -hmm. and it's a mix with stone, hydrogel, and then 20% soil so that the roots can grow through it. So okay. the stones bridge against each other and provide this big void space. The hydrogel sticks the soil to the void space and or to, you know, to the stone and then the roots can grow through that void space. Excellent. So what we're trying to do is grow Bermuda grass. This isn't Bermuda yet. We're going to put Bermuda on this summer. Grow Bermuda grass and have a green parking lot. We're going to allow people to park here and it should allow the water to infiltrate through. So again, stormwater uh, mitigation is a really important issue and this could help with that. Excellent, well thank you so much for sharing your demonstration with us. Great, thanks Kim.